Hello everyone, how are you guys doing? I have not done a Facebook Live in so long, it's crazy. So I hope everything, let me know when you guys come online that you can hear me well um, and the video is all good and everything so I just want to make sure before we get started. So um, before we begin, I want to say hi from Australia. It is just gone lunchtime here. I'm sorry, it's a little bit later than an hour, I know. I posted before and said that I'd be coming on in an hour. Um, so I'm a little bit late to that, but hi guys, welcome. I have um, something really interesting. I'm not doing my typical Facebook Live today. Actually, I haven't done any in ages, and there's a reason for that. I have been feeling God shifting up the gears with me a little bit um, in just the way I operate and all different kinds of things. And he has been stirring in my heart intercession more than ever before. So um, before we get started, let me know where you guys are watching from. Hi, Angie. Hello, beautiful people. We love you guys so much. Truly, we're so thankful to know so many of you. Um, we're just thankful. We're thankful to be able to speak into your lives. We love you guys a lot. So, <sighs> hi. I have not done a Facebook Live in ages, so let me just get back into the rhythm of it. Um, so, I have been, just before we get started, um, for those of you that are just joining online now, um, intercession has been burning in my heart and I really feel that God is just raising up this urgency to intercede and I don't want to scare you off with that because today I actually do want to pray for you um, but the Holy Spirit has been stirring something in my heart and first of all before we get started many of you would notice all over Facebook you know the news and everything it's kind of like the world is groaning the earth is groaning right now and um, I don't know about you, but it can be very overwhelming sometimes. Everything that's going on in the earth at the moment, it can feel so overwhelming. We see all these prayer requests coming in and we're like, oh my gosh, how am I meant to pray for all these things? There's so much to pray for God, let alone my own problems. How am I meant to pray for all of this? And I've been sitting on this for a little while. Um, you know, like last night I was reading about Israel and we have friends who are Jewish and they've been telling us all these different things. And then of course there's Bulgaria and then there's um, California at the moment, and we lived in Thousand Oaks, right next to the mall. Uh, sorry, we lived in Westlake Village, um, and I used to go to the Thousand Oaks shopping mall, um, right opposite where this latest shooting has happened. So there is a lot going on right now, um, and it seems to be increasing. And here's the thing, I have just been feeling from the Holy Spirit, hi Montana. You guys let me know where you're from, by the way, while I'm just talking, I'm just kind of getting into the flow of everything. Um, but yeah, I've just been feeling just this increase in the desire for intercession and the desire to really unite everyone to pray. And, you know, we're kind of like in this process at the moment where, like I was just saying, it can be overwhelming. You can look at everything and you're like, oh my gosh, God, how are we meant to pray for all of these things that are going on in the world right now? So here's the thing. The Holy Spirit said to me last night, he goes, will you host an online prayer gathering? So I don't know how this is going to go. I am kind of like um, figuring it all out at the moment. I was talking with Nate about it. Hi, New York. Hi, Dallas. I was talking with Nate about it. And so I kind of wanted to get on here today and get the feel for what you guys think about this. I have been praying about hosting an online live prayer gathering once a week. We'll see. I'm going to just test the waters and see how this goes. I have no idea how this is going to go. Oh my gosh, you're close to Thousand Oaks. We're going to be praying for that today. So here's the deal. I just really feel like we need to start increasing in prayer, but increasing in strategic prayer together. Um, and I kind of wanted to break down prayer for you as well. I wanted to give you kind of like um, a little bit of a mix match of my um, love of intercession and my love for prophecy and also my love for teaching. So I'm going to see how this goes today um, and we're going to maybe go from here and possibly look at hosting a weekly online on Facebook live prayer gathering where we can pray both small and big together, pray over the big issues of the world and also update your own prayer requests, you know, whatever's going on in your world because there is so much and yes, Michelle, we need strategies. And so I believe the Holy Spirit is really increasing this desire for us to intercede. And I don't want you to run away and say, oh, I'm not an intercessor. We're all called to intercede. We're all called to prophesy. We're all called to pray. And prayer is so much easier than we realize. I think we get overwhelmed by all of these things. And yes, we'll be praying for President Trump. We'll be praying for leaders. 
Um, no matter what your political stance is, the Bible tells us to pray for our leaders. And so we'll definitely be doing that. I'm going to look at how we go today, but I want to kind of lead you through the process of what the Holy Spirit has been speaking to me about intercession and really just stirring up my heart for this because, listen, we're here for a purpose. And whatever is going on in the world, we are not affected by it. In fact, we're meant to be here to affect the world, to actually intercept these dramas and dilemmas that are going on in the world. And this is the thing that has been stirring my heart so deeply, especially with all of the shootings that are going on in America. And I've just been sitting there, you know, just processing with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, what is your strategy for this? And I know that there are actual physical strategies, but I believe prayer needs to be striked first. Prayer needs to strike first and in that place, as we strike in prayer, we begin to see strategies unfold to governmental officials and people that are in leadership and people in high places, but it needs a company of believers to pray and strike first. We want to see these shootings come to an end and I want to tell you the Holy Spirit has given me a prayer strategy for this and I want to share it with you in a minute because I've just been really like honestly stirred by all of this by the things that happen here in Queensland with abortion. We carry the answer. We carry the answer for all of the earth's problems and rather than becoming weighed down and seeing all of these different issues that we need to be praying over and I can tell you from my own experience, I will get prayer requests coming in and I get, oh my gosh, God, I'm so overwhelmed by all these prayer requests and I begin carrying them. And the Holy Spirit is saying, you're not releasing them, Christy. Start releasing them, start praying over them. Start praying over these situations with strategic striking purpose that when we grab a hold of the promise and we grab a hold of the word that we're actually going to see these things shift and I'm excited about that. And so I want to see how this goes. Let me know what your thoughts are, what you think about, would you come along, um, would you join us live once a week? Let me know what you think about this, um, about joining us live once a week to host an online prayer gathering here on Facebook. And just to see these things shift, really to see them shift, to actually pray together. And here's the deal. If you're going to pray with me, I don't want you just sitting there. I want you actively praying. I want you proactively speaking out wherever you are in your home as we pray. And we're going to actually do that in a minute. So um, I wanted to just share with you first what the Holy Spirit is saying to me. You can do it in the evening. That's awesome. I'll, uh, if we continue to do these, what I'll do is I'll leave them online. Um, and so that you can come back and watch them later. You don't have to watch them live. You can come back and watch it later. You can just play it on the audio, driving in your car and just praying and agreeing with us. And you see, I believe that God wants us to pray and agree together in unity. And there has been a real um, stirring of disunity and division in the body of Christ. And I believe we can shift that through prayer as well. So um, I'm excited to share with you guys. I actually read something that Larry Sparks wrote a couple of days ago. I'm like, yes, that's it. He said, spiritual warfare is not about cleaning up the devil's messes. And what does he mean by that? You might sit there and think, well, hang on, there's all these messes out there and we need to be cleaning them up. Yes, prayer does shift and change atmospheres and it does clean up messes, but spiritual warfare at its very core is to literally shake up principalities before they have an opportunity to strike. And the Holy Spirit has been showing me that we have been in a place of reactionary prayer. That the church has been moving in reactionary prayer. So a shooting happens, we react, we pray then. And then, you know, you probably see all these things going along on Facebook. Pray for this area, pray for this area, pray for this place. And while that is great, we need to be praying in the wake of tra tragedies and praying in the wake of all these um, earthly disasters that are going on. I believe we as a company of people, as a company of godly people, have the authority to pray and strike before these, dis um, these destructive things take place. And yes, be on the offense, Michelle. That's actually something I wrote down here, is on the offense and that, you know, um, I'm, listen, I'm not great with um, sports, honestly, that is not my thing, so I actually had to look this up, but the Holy Spirit was talking to me about being on the offense. And I wanted to read to you what the offense team is, and a lot of you guys probably know this, but it's, you know, way past my mind. But the Holy Spirit was showing me, he goes, Christy, as the children of God, you're not the ones that are on defense. You're not trying to get back the ball. The defense is the team that doesn't have the ball. They don't have the, the play of the game. They're in reaction to their enemy team who is moving um, 
down the, what do you call it? <laughs> down the field with the ball. And the Holy Spirit is saying to us, take back the ball. Take back your authority. This is your authority. You have the authority over your family, over your situations, over your cities, and over your nations. It's time for the body of Christ to take back the ball. It's time for us to grab a hold of our authority, what truly belongs to us through the blood of Jesus. It is in our courts. It's in our hands. But instead of that, we've been running on defense. We've been reacting to every single problem that comes up against us. We've been trying to, you know, take back this, this ball. We're trying to, you know, reacting, literally reacting to the enemy team. Every single time something comes up, we react. And the Holy Spirit saying, you're not meant to be reacting. You're meant to be on offense, grabbing hold of your authority, moving down that field and taking back your authority, taking back what rightfully belongs to you. And that is where I believe we are right now in the body of Christ. It's time to take back our cities, take back our nations, take back our families. Enough is enough. And I don't know about you, but I've had absolutely enough of seeing all these things, you know, come out on Facebook with shootings and fires and all these things. And it's time for us to take back what rightfully belongs to us. The Holy Spirit is saying enough is enough. You have the ball. Take it back. <laughs> take back your authority. We've been reactionary. And God's saying, no more reactionary. I don't want you to be in a place of reactionary anymore. It's time to grab back your authority, run down that, you know, run down that field and score. It's time for us to score. I don't know about you, but honestly, I have had enough. Enough is enough. And I just feel it burning so deeply in my spirit. We need to be saying to one another, enough is enough. Enough is enough of the enemy coming in and trying to create division in the body of Christ. That every single time that something stirs up and arises, we all attack one another and that's what the holy that's what the enemy wants but the holy spirit is saying it's time to unite as one feel goal it's time to take some goals in the body of christ and take back what rightfully belongs to us and so i really wanted to encourage you with that today the other thing that the holy spirit has been talking to me about is preemptive prayer and that word has just been um breathing in my spirit over and over again i keep hearing him saying preemptive prayer preemptive prayer and so I began to look up, I'm such a word person, I began to look up what preemptive means and um, I'm going to read to you a number of the definitions that I found in Merriam-Webster dictionary and it says the right of purchasing before others. Because of the blood of the lamb, you and I have been given the right to purchase our authority or our authority is already in our hands, but to purchase nations, to purchase principalities to take back what belongs to us. It is in our right, it is our governmental jurisdiction, it is our governmental authority, and it is time to take it back. It is time to decree through our spoken words and uniting as one and saying, no, nope, you know what? I've had enough of the enemy advancing on me. I'm about to advance on him. Another definition says the purchase of something under this right. Yet again, a purchase of something. What are we purchasing? We're purchasing cities. We're purchasing nations. We're decreeing over our cities and over our nations. No more a ter is terror going to come into my city. Terror has no right to come into my city. Let me tell you, Nate and I were in worship the other night and in this very place of me just really praying over cities and nations and over families and, you know, literally going from the small spectrum of things to the larger spectrum of things. I really believe the Holy Spirit wants us to not just Pray for the situations that we see in front of us, but pray into the future. Pray into um, literally what the Holy Spirit is saying over cities and nations. And as we were praying, we began to pray over Australia. We have Awakening Australia coming up in the next few days. We're really excited for it. But the Holy Spirit was showing me, I don't want you praying just for Awakening Australia. Begin to pray over Australia. What am I speaking over Australia? And I believe he wants us to recognize this. What is he speaking over your city and over your nation? What is he speaking over your life? Not just for the here and now, not just for the next few days, but I mean for the next few years, for the next 10 to 50 years. What is the Holy Spirit speaking over those regions? He wants us to lift our eyes and see what he is decreeing over these places. And he began to show me a picture of um, literally pulling back an arrow. And I was pulling back an arrow. And as I pulled that arrow and I released it, I saw in the spirit that that arrow was released in the here and now into another time of dimension. And I saw it literally. That's what prayer does. It's like we might not see the um, we might not see in the very moment what prayer does in this very moment of time. 
But in five, 10 years time, you'll go, wow, that was that prayer that I prayed. And literally that arrow has finally struck its, you know, it's hit bullseye. Literally prayer releases an arrow from this dimension of time into another dimension of time. That's what prayer does. And that's why we need to be so strategic and so um, just intentional about going after these prayer strikes, striking with prayer over our cities and over our nations, watching the manifest glory of God being released onto the earth. We're here for a purpose, you guys. You have the creative power to release these prayer strikes, literally to release these prayer arrows into your family, into your city, into your nation. And so um, I wanted to read one more and one more definition of preemptive prayer. And it means launching a preemptive attack in order to prevent a suspected imminent, imminent sorry, attack. How is that? Launching a preemptive attack in order to prevent a suspected imminent attack. And I kept thinking about these shootings. I kept thinking about all these things that are happening in America, across the nations, not just in America, all across the nations. And so yet again, going back to this place where we were praying over Australia, we were literally releasing a strike over Australia, a strike of prayer, you know, in, I think it's with Elisha, and he told the king to strike the ground. He said, strike the ground, and the king only struck the ground three times. And he said, if you had struck it more, you would have seen the breakthrough. And that's what God's saying to us right now. It's time to strike the ground in authority. It's time to strike the ground in the, in the right that you've been given to decree over your situation, over your family, over your finances, over your health, over the depression that has been warring against you, over your city and over your nation. And here's the thing, as we were praying this, and the Holy Spirit's been showing me this about preemptive prayer, there happened to be at that very moment, we were praying over Melbourne, we were praying over Australia for the coming awakening Australia, and at that very moment, there was a terrorism attack happening in Melbourne, I had no idea, we were praying over it, and um, we were praying over Melbourne, sorry, and there was a terrorism attack happening at that very moment in Melbourne, and it was intercepted. And I'm not saying it's just because of my prayer, but I am saying I know prayer shifts atmospheres. It moves beyond our very dimension. It moves beyond what we're capable to do, capable to do in our own hands, in our own ability. And God reacts. God reacts to our prayers. God moves on behalf of our prayers. And everyone's saying, oh, the judgment of God is coming. We're seeing this happen and this happen. No, God's judgment was satisfied on the cross. And that's a whole nother story. And I could go into that for you as well, but I won't right now. Focus on prayer. But literally, we are here. You and I are here as stewards of heaven to release heaven to earth. And it's time that we do that. It's time we arise in our authority, in our God-given authority, and release and strike the ground over our nations, over our families, over our cities. Enough is enough, people. It's time for us to move. It's time for us to take those goals in the spirit, take that ball of authority down that field and grab that goal in the name of Jesus. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit, you guys. <laughs> Another definition of preemptive prayer is a prior seizure or appropriation, a taking possession before others. You guys, this is it. It's literally, we grab back our authority, we take possession of a land before the enemy has a chance to strike. We take possession over a city, we take possession over a nation, we say enough is enough, not on my watch, this is my land, this is my place, this is the place that God has given me and I have had enough of seeing these shootings, I've had enough of seeing these demonic principalities overcoming the land, overcoming. And you know what, I believe that as we begin to move in this place of authority, we're going to start to see these shootings shift. We're going to start to see these shootings dissipate in the name of Jesus because God, I feel it from heaven. Even God is saying enough is enough of these, you know, loss of life. I want to see his spirit move across our land. I want to see his spirit move. And it comes from a place of desperation. God, we are desperate to see your glory fall. We're desperate to see your glory fall across our land. Father, we have had enough of this loss of life. And so you guys, today, I wanted to pray with you. Um, I really just felt to pray with you that we're going to pray 
over your, over your circumstances as well. But here's the thing. I don't want you just watching. I want you praying that as we pray that you are actively striking wherever you are. Whether you're at work, if you have to go into the bathroom and pray out loud. Whether you're at home with your children. You guys, literally all we need is an army on our knees. We need an army on our knees that are surrendered to his call. That are surrendered to him. And that say, yes God, we take back our authority over us. We take back our authority over our land. We take back our authority over our families. Enough is enough that we are moving back into our authority. We're taking back the ball. We're taking back the ball. And I believe I decree that over you right now. We're taking back our ball of authority, that football. <laughs> I know it's a funny analogy, but we're taking it back. And it's time for the enemy to go into crazy meltdown as he loses his authority. And honestly, we are going to watch the Spirit of God move across the earth as we begin to pray in strategic strikes of warfare. We're going to watch the Spirit of God move as we cry out for Him to heal our land, to heal the land that has been just seized by the enemy. And it's time for us, the people of God, the sons and daughters to arise. The earth is crying out for you and I to arise. And you know what? The enemy wants to surround us with situations. He wants to surround us with circumstances. And you may be surrounded by so many problems and impossibilities and situations and circumstances. But here's the thing. I want to encourage you to begin to pray. And that's what I really felt from the Holy Spirit, to begin to just start to do these um, online prayer gatherings and pray over your situations and then take it out wide and pray over cities and nations because we're not meant to be overwhelmed by what's going on in the world. We carry the answer. We carry the answer of heaven and we are here to appropriate heaven on the earth. We're here to take back our authority, grab hold of what belongs to us and prevent and implement, sorry, prevent um, these demonic attacks, these these shootings from taking place and not just the shootings but everything that's going on it's time for us to take back our authority so here's the deal i wanted to <clears throat> pray over um let's see four specific um things after we pray over your uh your prayer requests so um we're going to be praying for israel israel has been um they've been under heavy uh fire from i think oh, i can't remember all their names and everything you guys know what i'm talking about um, we actually have friends, neighbors who are from Israel um, and they've been updating us regularly. There have been um, just ongoing attacks. There are children and families that are displaced. Um, these bombs have been hitting actual into Israel um, or the outskirts of it, sorry. Um, but each of these bombs, they only cost about $150 and it costs Israel about $150,000 to intercept them. So the enemy is really going after Israel as always. And the Holy Spirit said, or sorry, the Word of God says to us, those who bless Israel, I will bless. And so Israel is very important. We are engrafted into Israel. So we're going to pray for Israel. We're going to pray for California as well for these fires. Um, you know, I just believe that the Holy Spirit is breathing over Israel right now. I mean, sorry, Israel and California. Um, over California right now, uh, we've got friends who are literally in the line of all the fires. Um, and the fires came up to their doorsteps and stopped. Um, but even those who have lost life there, there's a lot going on in the world right now. But here's the thing, you and I carry the strategies of heaven and we need to look from the perspective of heaven. So rather than just making a blanket statement, oh, God's judging the earth right now, we carry the strategy of heaven. We carry the kingdom of heaven and the strategies of his heart that are to release these strategies. And it starts with prayer. I'm telling you, it starts with prayer. Um, we also want to pray for Bulgaria and pray for Awakening Australia. So if you haven't seen Bulgaria as well, um, George and Bam Banov updated about how they are trying to remove um, Christianity um, from Bulgaria. So obviously, you know, there's a lot of... Um, opposition with Christians at the moment and that's just the enemy uprising it just means that we're in exciting times you don't have to fear it but before we pray over those I wanted to pray for you guys um, and so I want to encourage you to write your prayer requests um, write your own prayer requests and but here's the thing I don't want you to just write a um, prayer request you know out of desperation because I believe that um, oftentimes we've looked at prayer as a what did I write here like a helpless plea, 
like please pray for me and I'm struggling and I'm going through this at the moment um, and I honestly believe that God wants us to begin to shift our perspective of prayer that prayer is not just a helpless plea it's actually a declaration and so instead of writing a plea um, so to say I'm not saying this in a bad way um, I've done this so many times myself I know that when you're in a place of desperation you really really need um, prayer but I want you to actively write a declaration like heaven's perspective over your prayer situation over the situation that you're facing so maybe it's um, you're facing depression or anxiety you've had suicidal thoughts I want you to ask the Holy Spirit for his perspective Holy Spirit what is your perspective over this that I am alive in Christ and he is alive within me. I have a clear mind. I don't have these problems anymore. I don't have, um, I thank you, Father, that I don't have, um, what could it be like, um, suicidal thoughts any longer, but I'm healed. I'm healed, body, soul, and spirit. Um, I just want you to really engage in this with me. I'm going to put some worship on. We're going to actively pray. I don't want to just get on here and preach at you. I really wanted to actually just walk you through praying with me because I believe there is so much power in this right now. And so um, if you want us to pray for your family, I'm not going to be able to read through every comment. I'm kind of going to just pray as a whole. Um, I'll read as I can as well. But I want you as well, if you can, to pray for someone else that you see. If you see someone else's comment come up, pray for them as well. This is like an active online prayer gathering. If you can imagine it from all around the world right now, from wherever you're watching, that we're like these lights in the earth right now that are releasing the Spirit of God from wherever we are. We're all across, all around the world. I saw you guys from America. I'm pretty sure I saw someone from New Zealand. Um, wherever else you're watching from, that we are literally joining together as one in the Spirit as we pray over these situations, as we pray over your families, as we pray over every single thing that we're facing right now and that we don't need to get overwhelmed with it. Um, and that's what I believe the Holy Spirit really just wants to emphasize to us. We don't need to be overwhelmed with what the earth is facing right now. All we need is his perspective. And you know, Jesus, when he came to earth, he went up to the mountain almost every single day. And he went up to the mountain and then he came back down. And he went up to the mountain and spent time with the Father and then came back down. And it's like every single time he went up to the mountain, he got the Father's perspective. And so that's what we're doing here. We're getting the Father's perspective over these situations we're facing right now, over these situations in the earth, over our own situations and problems. And I really just wanted to um, create a, an environment where you can learn if you've never maybe prayed um, in, this, in this capacity before, or maybe you feel a little bit overwhelmed with prayer. I really wanted to create an environment where we can begin to pray together. I know it's a little bit different. I haven't done this before, you guys, but I encourage you, don't just watch me praying. Really engage in prayer. So I want to put on some worship. Hold on one second. Nate put worship on for me. He always helps me set it up because I'm a little bit um, not very good with technology. <laughs> Let me know if you can hear that. Can you guys hear that? Just some nice background worship. So yeah, I can see you guys putting your prayer requests up. Holy Spirit. Can you guys hear that music? Is that alright? Just pray in tongues. I encourage you to pray in tongues. The Bible says we enter his courts with thanksgiving and through praise. And so I always like to start prayer off with thanksgiving and praise. I don't always like to just come to him with, you know, oh God, here, here's my list of needs. And while that's fine, he is not judging of that at all. But I find it comes from such a more powerful place when I enter into his courts with thanksgiving and praise. I thank him. I thank him for what he's doing in my life. And then I begin to see from a different perspective. So Holy Spirit, we enter your courts right now with thanksgiving and praise. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. All across the world right now, wherever we're watching from, we welcome you into our homes. Holy Spirit, I thank you for your peace to enter right now. Thank you for your peace to enter, Holy Spirit. Shandaraya, Nandaraya, Kondalmo, Nandaraya, Shandara, Nandaraya, Sandaraya, Kondalmo, Nandaraya, Shandara. 
rising over us like the sun of a new day. Thank you, Jesus. I want to read this scripture as we continue praying, and I'm going to continue praying. Psalm 46, 1 to 5. God, you are such a safe and powerful place to find refuge. You're a proven help in times of trouble, more than enough and always available whenever I need you. So we will never fear. We will never fear. Even if every structure of support were to crumble away, we will not fear. Father, I thank you that we will not fear, even when the earth quakes and shakes, moving mountains and casting them into the sea, for the raging roar of stormy winds and crashing waves cannot erode our faith in you. God has a constantly flowing river whose sparkling streams bring joy and delight to his people. His river flows right through the city of God Most High into his holy dwelling place. God is in the midst of his city, secure and never shaken. At daybreak, his help will be seen with the appearing of the dawn. Thank you, Father God. Lord, we lift up every single prayer request to you right now, Father. I thank you, Lord God, that we're not coming to you pleading, Father, for these prayer requests. We're coming to you in thanksgiving, in thanksgiving that you've already answered our prayers, Father God. You're already answering our prayers. You're already moving, Father God. I thank you, Lord, for families, Lord, right now. For every single prayer request that is coming up on the screen, Holy Spirit, you see them. You see every single prayer request, Father God. You see every single disappointment. You see every single seeming impossibility. You see every single problem, Father God, and you have an answer and a strategy for every single problem. And Father, we lift it up to you right now. We bring our, th our thanks and our praise to you and we lift up these prayer requests to you right now. I thank you, Father God, for healing over every single body, over every single um, cell, Father God. We speak to cancer and we command cancer to dissipate in Jesus' mighty name. We speak to asthma. I feel like there are those that are watching right now who have asthma. And I see the Spirit of God burning on your lungs right now, burning away that asthma. We speak to asthma. We speak to cancer. We speak to, um, I actually see tumors in the mind, in the brain, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you are dissipating those tumors, that you are causing those tumors to... Um, to die in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Father God, for healing over bodies. Father, over every single situation, every single problem that the enemy throws at us in our bodies, Father, I thank you, Lord God, that we are healed, spirit, soul, and body, that the stripes of Jesus on the cross bore our sicknesses and pain, that we do not have to walk in sickness and pain one day longer in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Father God, for sickness and pain to bow to the name of Jesus. We command infirmity, every single infirmity represented here, to bow to the name of Jesus right now. I thank you, Holy Spirit, there is no distance in prayer. The Holy Spirit, yes, you even use Facebook Live to move and breathe in the lives of your people, Father God. I thank you, Lord, for that right now, for children's health, for over children, Father God, where the enemy would come against children there is sickness and infirmity. We rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, your word says when two or more gather together in agreement, there you are in our midst. And Father, here we are gathered, multitudes of us, Father God, or hundreds of us, Father, but it can turn into multitudes. Father, I thank you, Lord, that there are hundreds of us gathered together in agreement. And here you are in our midst, Father. Here you are in our midst. And we thank you, Father God, for healing over our bodies. I thank you, Lord God, for financial restoration. I hear financial restoration. I see many um, who have credit cards and they are maxed out credit cards and I see the worry on your face. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, for creative miracles, Father God, for creative breakthrough in terms of financial miracle, Father. I thank you, Lord, for banks to come to people. I actually see banks coming to you. And listen, I'm not just decreeing this. I want to remind you right now. I'm not just saying this off a whim. I'm saying this by the Spirit of God, and I want you to receive this. If this is you right now, receive it. Say, yes, Father, this is for me. I receive it. And just like I said to you, that arrow that is being shot, that you might not see it in this very moment, but you will see it if you faint not, if you continue to strike the ground. 
And so I see banks coming to those of you that are in um, a financial destitution. That's what I heard, financial destitution. And I saw banks coming to you and somehow, some way, they're like, we don't understand it, we don't know why, but your debt has been wiped. And so Father, I thank you, Lord, for that in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Lord God, for homes. I thank you, Father God, for families where there has been, um, I just saw like the enemy bar barraging families, just coming against families, trying to cause um, disruption and disunity in the midst of families. And we speak peace, Father God. We speak peace over our children, Father. I thank you, Lord God, for those whose children have run away from you as well, Father. We call them back in the name of Jesus. For those whose children have walked away from the Lord or who don't yet know him, we call them back in the name of Jesus right now, Father. I thank you, Lord God, for that. I thank you, Father, for our children, that you're raising up our children as sons and daughters of the King. You're raising up our children to be strong on the earth, um, representing your name, Father God, that we are raising this next generation, whether our children are young or old, Father. I thank you, Lord God, that they will walk in their destinies, Father God, that you will bring them into their destinies, Father. For those who are on drugs, Lord, I just saw as well that there are many on here who have children who are on drugs. Father, I thank you, Lord God. We rebuke that demonic agenda and attack of the enemy, a mind-blinding spirit. It's a mind-blinding spirit that comes against them. It comes through depression. It comes through anxiety. And it even comes through wrong choices, obviously. But Father, we thank you, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus for an awakening over their spirits, Father God, that they would suddenly have a distaste for it in Jesus' mighty name. I saw my own father, or I didn't see him, but my own father was in instantly um, delivered from drugs, from a major drug addiction instantly before I was born. So Father, I release that anointing right now over children, over sons and daughters, over family members who are addicted to drugs and we speak no more in Jesus' mighty name. Come back to your, um, come back to your identity in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you, Lord, for peace over families. I thank you, Lord, that you're restoring families right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Shandara ya kandara ya kandara. Keep speaking, keep prophesying. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Shandara ya kandara ya. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're so good to us, Father God. You're so good. You bring us hope. You give us hope where there is so much fear on the earth right now. You've given us unrelenting hope, unwavering hope. And I thank you, Father God, for hope to be restored to individuals watching this right now where your hope has been um, your hope has been deferred. I speak hope restored in Jesus' mighty name. I speak courage to your hearts. I speak courage to walk in the destiny of God upon your life. I believe there are many of you, you're at the threshold of a door and I updated this the other day. You're at the threshold of a door and I saw many at the threshold of a door. But the dogs of doom are barking at the doors of your destiny and you're scared to walk through. And I speak to you courage, courage from the, uh, from the Spirit of God right now over you in the name of Jesus, that you would walk in the courage to walk through that door in Jesus' mighty name. You would walk through unafraid in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father God. I thank you, Lord God, for marriages. I saw marriages under attack. You see, the enemy is going from everything to literally dismantle the people of God, to dismantle our identity in Christ. And he does that literally from, from um, the unborn all the way up to marriages. He does it to dismantle families, to dismantle our identity. And so, Father, right now, we thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we speak the blood of the Lamb over families. I speak restoration over marriages in Jesus' mighty name. Marriages where it's like there is just a tether left. There is like, it's like hanging by a thread. I saw it. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that you would just reunite, re-knit marriages back together supernaturally in the name of Jesus. Yes, we speak no more delay, Father. There has been a prophetic just utterance going across the body of Christ through prophetic words and prophetic voices. No more delay. And we speak no more delay in Jesus' mighty name over every single situation represented here right now. Father, I thank you, Lord. I also felt to pray over depression, anxiety, and suicide. <clears throat> For those of you that maybe you have a loved one who's facing depression, um, maybe you are feeling that yourself, maybe you're going through depression, um, even tag someone in this um, that they can watch later if they're going through this because I want to pray for that. Um, also for postnatal depression as well. I felt specifically postnatal depression um, where the enemy comes against mothers to rob them of their joy after they've just had a baby. And he did that with me 
I had um, postnatal depression, um, heavy depression, heavy suicidal thoughts, had all of that. So right now, I just want to pray peace over your mind in the name of Jesus. I see the blood of the Lamb just literally falling on your mind and covering your mind from the top of your head. And I feel like you're even going to feel a wave washing over you. I speak the blood of the Lamb over your mind. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you're taking back minds in the name of Jesus, where the enemy has come in and set up strongholds in the mind of that Holy Spirit. You are coming in and reestablishing your stronghold of joy, hope, and peace. Father, we're not meant to walk in depression. We're not meant to walk in anxiety. I thank you, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, for you just washing over minds right now. I command that depression stronghold be broken off you right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Shundariya kandariya, sandariya kandariya. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, you're restoring Sarah, Father. Thank you, Lord God, for bringing joy to families. Thank you, Jesus. Nandariya kandariya. Yes. We have the mind of Christ. I thank you, Jesus, that those that are suffering with that depression, I decree of you, you have the mind of Christ. This is not who you are. The enemy has lied to you and told you this is who you are and this is who you always be. And I want to tell you right now, it is a lie from the pit of hell. The enemy is scared of you. He is scared of you and what you carry. And it's time to step into your authority. It's time to take back your authority. It's time to grab hold of that ball of authority and take back what belongs to you. You are a child of God. You are a king on this earth. You're operating under a heavenly realm. We're not of this earth. We're not of this earth. And so therefore we're not susceptible to the enemy's lies, even though we fall prey to them, but we do not have to accept them one moment longer. And so I release over you the freedom. It is for freedom that Christ came. It is for freedom. And so I speak freedom over you right now in Jesus' mighty name. Whatever situation you're facing, I speak freedom. The freedom of Christ, the freedom of the blood of the Lamb over every single circumstance represented here. In the name of Jesus, take back your authority, beloved ones. Take back your authority. You are powerful and strong in the spirit. The enemy has come against you, but he will flee before you thousands of ways. He will flee before you because he is recognizing what you carry. He is afraid of who you are. He is afraid of the representation of Christ within you, the hope of glory. He is so afraid of it. And so, Father, right now we speak peace over bodies. We speak peace over souls. We speak peace over minds in Jesus' mighty name. We speak peace to families. We speak restoration in Jesus' mighty name. I even see the Holy Spirit restoring back bloodlines where your bloodlines have just been destroyed. And um, there's a whole teaching on that. But Father, I just thank you, Lord, right now that you're restoring us. You've restored us back to the cross. And it's in the cross and in your resurrection, Jesus, that we were raised with you. Christ, the hope of glory, that we have been raised in you. We are free. We are not captives. We're no longer slaves. Father God, that we are free and that we are um, literally the antidote for this earth. We carry <laughs> the answer that the world is crying out for. So right now we use our voices and we speak and prophesy. And I want to actually begin to pray right now over our cities and our nations. I want you to pray over, um, actually, sorry, before I do that, Angie, you just mentioned no more fog. Um, there has been a confusion. Um, I saw in the spirit there has been confusion over um, prophetic voices. There has been confusion over us moving into this new um, season. It's a new season that we're crossing over into. I don't say that lightly. Listen, we're crossing over into a new season. And the enemy has been creating this perpetual cycle of confusion. And I want to speak to that right now in Jesus mighty name. Confusion be broken. We speak clarity in the name of Jesus. For the people that are watching this right now and later, Father, 
that they would begin to see the steps that they need to take before them. I feel like many of you have been like, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm confused. What am I meant to do? What's my next step? And the Holy Spirit is saying, surrender it to me right now. We speak to that confusion. We command it to um, that fog to dissipate in the name of Jesus, that we would walk into our authority, that the vision would become clearer. I thank you, Lord, for restored vision. I even speak to hopelessness right now. Many of you have been hopeless. You've been in a place of hopelessness for many years. Holy Spirit, I ask you for an injection of hope right now. Father, I thank you for it right now in the name of Jesus that you are literally, I saw an injection like a giant needle. I know it sounds weird, but a giant needle going into your heart and injecting you with hope. It's like an injection of hope from heaven and it won't hurt. <laughs> so I just thank you, Holy Spirit, for that right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, yeah. What are you saying, Holy Spirit? What is your strategy? What are you saying, Holy Spirit? We just thank you, Father God, that you are moving and breathing across the earth. There is no greater time to be alive because we get to be a part of something incredible that no eye has seen, no ear has heard. We haven't yet seen in the past what God's about to do. In other words, I mean... The revivals of the past, that they have nothing on what God is doing in us right now. And so I want to encourage you, you're here for a reason, you're here for a purpose, and the enemy has been trying to distract you from that purpose. The enemy is trying to um, keep you, your eyes prevented from seeing where you're moving into, what we're moving into, because God is moving mightily, and he wants you to recognize what you carry. I don't want you to die with your purpose buried within you. Honestly, it's time to release it. It's time to release that purpose, that hope that's within you. I feel like even right now that the Holy Spirit is stirring in many people right now. There is like a bubbling stirring. It's that fire of the Spirit of God stirring right here in our soul, in our right there where your tummy is, that's where your soul is. You might feel that fire just burning. Sometimes to me it feels like a baby moving. It actually feels like a baby moving and I'm like, hang on, I'm, not, I'm definitely not pregnant. That's the Holy Spirit moving. And I believe He's moving and awakening right now within us our um, just fresh vision and fresh hope and fresh joy to actually recognize who we are and what we carry, that we're here for a reason and it's time to take back our authority. We are here. It's an exciting time to be alive. If you have breath in your lungs, you are here for purpose. You are here for hope. You are here for joy. And so I release that joy over you right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you're doing in us individually, that you're moving and breathing powerfully in us individually right now. Oh, you're so good, Father God. Just thank him. Thank him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're so good. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord, that you're rebuilding ancient ruins through us. You're rebuilding the devastated cities, Father God. Lord, I thank you, Father, for it. In Jesus' name. I want to pray over Israel right now as well. Holy Spirit, we speak and prophesy protection over Israel in the name of Jesus, where the enemy has been coming in like a flood. The Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard over Israel in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Father God, that you are lifting up that standard. Holy Spirit, come in like a flood in Jesus' mighty name over Israel right now. I thank you, Lord God, for your angelic armies surrounding Israel's borders. Father, I even feel to pray for those ones that are stuck in the crossfire, in um, in Gaza, Father God, for the families, for the children that are stuck in this crossfire. Holy Spirit, I thank you, Father, that you would make a way for them to escape in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you're protecting Israel. Lord, your word says that those who pray and bless for Israel, you, br uh, you bless us. So, Father, we bless Israel right now. We thank you, Father God, for your hand of protection, your mighty hand of protection surrounding Israel right now in the name of Jesus that we come together as one. We surround Israel in your protection. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for your beloved Israel, that you love Israel. Father, we thank you, Lord, even for encountering the Jewish people in their dreams in the night. I had a dream a number of months ago, and I shared this on Facebook, um, where Jesus literally came to me, and he was the rain. He was literally the rain, and it was so beautiful. He was literally the rain. 
and the rain was falling and somehow he was formed in this rain. It was just beautiful. It was an encounter dream. And he said to me, Christy, they will hear my name in the rain. And he said it to me three times and I knew it was about Israel. I knew it was about his Jewish, uh, the Jewish people encountering Jesus in the rain. And what did he mean by that? In the latter rain harvest, that as you and I arise, that they are gonna see him. They're gonna, their eyes will suddenly be uncovered and they'll be like, oh my gosh, it's the Messiah, he's real. The Messiah, he's real. And so Father, I thank you, Lord God, for that right now, that you're encountering your people, the Hebrew people, Father God, your Jewish people, the, the Israelites, Father. We thank you, Lord, for them right now, that you're encountering them that Lord, you are sending your presence to them, that you are speaking to them, that they would see your name in the rain, that they would recognize you, Jesus. We thank you, Father, for them right now in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, we lift up California to you. Father, we, we just um, decree the rain as well over California, Father God. Lord, where California has been in the drought, it's a drought both naturally and spiritually. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you are raising up a standard with righteousness, Father, over California. We decree righteousness over California. That is the answer over California, that the righteous people would stand up amongst California. I actually read where many people are saying, I'm a Christian and I'm leaving California. Do not leave California. If you are in California, you are there for a purpose and you're there for a reason. And so, Father, we lift up California to you right now as well, Jesus, as your people, Lord. And I, I want to just encourage you, keep decreeing, keep praying, whatever the Holy Spirit is saying to you right now. Pray in agreement with what I'm praying. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord. Lift up your voices. Actually speak and prophesy. You have the Spirit of God living in you and it needs to be released. So Father, we thank you, Lord, for rain. We call forth the rain, both spiritual and natural, over California in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Father God, that you respond to our cries. Lord, send the rain. Put out these fires, but Father, send your rain of revival, of awakening over California, not just as and not just a um a passing revival, but the Father God, you would awaken California to her true purpose of destiny. The Father God, you are raising up a standard of righteousness in California. We decree California is for Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. We decree California is for the blood of the Lamb. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that we are going to see more and more movies coming out of Hollywood. I thank you, Lord God, that you are cleansing Hollywood, in Jesus' mighty name that you're encountering celebrities, Father God, that you are after their heart just as much as you're after the homeless. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord, encounter them in dreams, encounter them with people crossing their path and speaking into their lives in Jesus' mighty name. Have mercy over California. Yes, Gail. Have mercy, Father God. We plead mercy over California in Jesus' mighty name right now. We plead the mercy and the blood of the Lamb. Father God, I thank you, Lord, that we lift up just um, all the hurting right now. I thank you, Father. Oh, Holy Spirit, encounter them. Encounter them, but I pray that we would be a people that don't pray reactionary prayers any longer, that we move into a place of speaking and prophesying what we want to see over these lands, over these cities and states and nations. Father, we plead mercy right now, and we thank you, Father God, that we're going to see a shift take place over California, that California is going to become um, like a leader of righteousness in the land of America, in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Father God. Yes, we pray for the families of the loved ones from Thousand Oaks. I thank you, Father God. Jesus, encounter their hearts. Bring peace and comfort as only you know how. But I thank you, Father God, that we would begin to see these shootings become history in Jesus name through our blood th sorry through the blood of the lamb and through our authority seizing our authority and taking back what rightfully belongs to us our cities and our nations in Jesus name Lord we also lift up Bulgaria we've got two more to cover and then I want to pray some more over you guys but father we just lift up um, Bulgaria to you and I thank you father God that you are moving strategically in that nation. You're moving strategically, Father God, that you are raising up again a standard of righteousness that, Father, where the enemy has come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord lifts up his standard against him. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for strategies in the government. I thank you, Lord, that you have strategic people in government that are going to lift up that standard, that they're going to stand at that wall and say, not on my watch. This is not happening on my watch. In 
in Jesus' mighty name, that they will not um, eradicate Christianity from that nation in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Father God, for Bulgaria. I thank you, Lord God, that as a righteous people, we stand at the gates of these nations and we say, not on our watch in Jesus' mighty name. And it will not pass. Thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name, that you're moving mightily in that land. I thank you, Father, for the Christians, that you would uh, release courage, righteous courage into their hearts to stand up and shout and decree that this will not happen and we just decree awakening over Bulgaria. We thank you, Father God, for that. Thank you, Lord. I think, Rebecca, you just said there's been another gunman. Well, listen, I want to share with you guys afterwards a... Um, a strategy that the Holy Spirit has given me in prayer that I want to see each of us pick up over these things. So yes, Holy Spirit, we thank you. Thank you for each and every situation represented here over the nations, Father God, over every nation that's represented here as well, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, that we're going to see movement in this. And Lord, finally, we pray for Awakening Australia that's coming up over the next few days. Lord, I thank you, Father God, for your rain falling upon Australia as well, the great south land of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for unity amongst the churches here. I thank you, Father God, that we are going to see unprecedented salvations coming in, that this would be like a strike in the ground, Father God, over this nation, Father God, that Australia would begin to move into her prophesied destiny as the great south land of the Holy Spirit, that there have been many prophecies prophesied that the great awakening would begin here. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord God, that this is the very beginning of that. I, I honestly believe we're already in awakening, but it's like the, the rivers are stirring right now. The waters are moving. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord, for that in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we speak unity over the church here. We speak um, just a unified front, Father God, that we would come together. We would not be... Um, what do you call it, in competition, Father God. There's a thing in Australia called tall poppy syndrome. If you don't know what that is, I won't go into it, but it's where we tend to cut each other down. And so, Father, I speak unity right now that we would no, there would be no competition, Father, any longer, that we would see and lift one another up in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Father God, that you are moving mightily in this nation as well, Father. Over the um, drought here in New South Wales, Father, we speak um, rain over this land as well, Father. And we thank you, Lord, for your rain over this nation supernaturally, for an awakening. Father, this um, awakening Australia, I believe it's like that strike in the ground, that mark in the ground for the beginning of a, a mighty movement of the Holy Spirit across this nation and the nations. So, yes, Father, we thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Uh, if you want to keep sharing any more of your prayer requests, go for it. Because, um, you know, if you're watching this back later as well, um, and if you've shared a prayer, prayer request, please write on someone else's prayer request and pray for them. I really just want to kind of create this environment of prayer where we're really just actively moving in prayer, not just saying, I'm going to pray for that. And I've done that so many times. Um, you know, someone says, please pray for me. And I'll be honest with you. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll pray for you. And then you just forget. Life happens and you move on. Um, so that's why I really wanted to... I think the Holy Spirit has just been stirring my heart to really create an atmosphere of prayer um, and really going after this intercession because we get scared by the word intercession. We think that we have to be thrown off into a room for 12 hours and praying in intercession and groaning and moaning. Um, and yes, it is a part of that as well. There is that. I've um, been in that place where I've been in um, a groan, like the Holy Spirit actually woke me up one night and I began to groan over abortion. And it was almost like a, a birth thing, you know, like birthing strange noises. I'm like, what is happening, God? And it sounds weird, but honestly, um, sometimes the Holy Spirit, he does things that you can't explain. Um, but literally, I feel like what the Holy Spirit wants to do through this um, is to really honestly go after prayer more strategically as the body of Christ. And so if you guys... Um, if you think you might want to watch some of these, um, let me know. I want your feedback. I want to know what you think about doing these online prayer gatherings, um, coming together and praying together actively, not just talking about praying, not praying in reaction to uh, shootings, but actually praying um, preemptive prayers. And um, yes, we've prayed for marriages, Crystal. We thank you, Lord. We bless your marriage in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for restoration over marriages. Um, yes, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for every single prayer that's represented here right now. Um, thank you, Holy Spirit. 
if you're just jumping on now, I encourage you when this live finishes, go back and watch it and pray along um, with all of the prayers because honestly, prayer is so powerful. I think we forget how powerful prayer is. God created us as created beings. He created us in his image and he created the earth through his, his words, his spoken words. And so as we speak, we actually see atmospheres change and shift. And listen, I want to tell you as well, we were in um, DC last year. And if you're just joining now, I mentioned earlier that the Holy Spirit showed me a picture of prayer and what it is. And it's like we're releasing an arrow. And the moment we pull back that arrow and release it, we're releasing it in this moment of time. And it's going to go into and strike into another dimension of time. It could be one year, two years down the track, or it could be next week. Um, the thing is, is we're releasing it in faith. We're saying, thank you, Father God. We're releasing these prayers right now. And we're going to see a shift in um, the natural. That the natural has to bow to our prayers. Literally, that's what prayer is. That we're speaking the answer before we see it. And so um, we went to the Supreme Court and God gave us this date. And it was like a prayer strike. I had no idea what it was all about. And we went to this... Um, we went to the Supreme Court and I remember laying my hands on the Supreme Court and some of you guys might have seen the, um, the live for that and we got moved on by the uh, security guard. But the thing is, is we were active in response to God's call to pray. And so as we prayed over those doors and it was the 5th of October, I think it was, um, and we didn't see anything immediately, but then exactly one year to the day is the day that Kavanaugh was confirmed. And literally, God moving a righteous judge into place in the Supreme Court. And you see, we don't know the times. Um, we don't often see the, what do you call it, the imminent reaction of that prayer. But we will see it. That's the thing. We will see the reaction of our prayers. Just like I said before, you might say, oh my gosh, that's that prayer I prayed last week. That's literally coming to pass. It's coming into pass. And so the Father wants us to dream with him. He wants us to dream with him and dream his dreams. And so this is what I wanted to encourage you over cities, over your family. So hang on, we'll take it small over you, over your family, over your marriage, over your children. I want to encourage you. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you? over the situations you're facing right now. Maybe your children have walked away from the Lord. Well, begin to ask the Holy Spirit and dream with him. Father, what are you saying over my children that have walked away from you? And he'll begin to give you a picture of them walking with him and moving in power and in glory. He'll begin to give you a picture of his answer, of his strategy. Then begin to pray into that and prophesy to them. Listen, I see you like this. And you don't have to scream it at their faces. You can just pray it um, in your own room but begin to prophesy into that don't just um, sit there and yes it's not a microwave some prayers we'll see immediate reaction from but some prayers we need to keep striking over and over again and so the same is for our cities um, for every single area of our lives from the small right out to the big and so this is what I wanted to encourage you guys with in terms of if you're in America or wherever you are in the world listen this isn't just for America this is for wherever you are in the world but I wanted to target these shootings. And, you know, because a lot of these people that were at this shooting, the recent shooting, they were Christians. And I'm like, God, we're the ones that have the authority to prevent these things from happening. What did I say before about preemptive? It says launching a preemptive attack in order to prevent a suspected imminent attack. And listen, this is no judgment on anyone. No judgment on them for loss of life. It's the enemy who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But this is the thing. You and I carry the authority. It's time to take back our authority. It's time to get back on the offense, not on defense any longer. We've been running around on defense and reacting to the enemy and trying to take back the ball and worn out and exhausted from it. It's time for us to run with that ball of authority and run down that field, like I said before, and score those goals of victory in Jesus' name. That's who we are. We're the people of God moving in power and force across the earth. And so this is what the Holy Spirit showed me. He said, Christy, it's simple. Begin to, as you're driving around, and I want to encourage you to do this, as you're driving around, begin to pray over your shopping centers. When you just join the groceries, in the name of Jesus, we will not see a terrorism attack take place here. I cover this place in the blood of the Lamb. When you're taking your children to school, 
plead the blood of Jesus over that school, claim Psalms 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Lord Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and I am here for a purpose. And begin to decree it. This is my territory. The enemy will not come here. We will not see shootings take place here. And even plead the blood of Jesus over all the children in your school. Begin to do that, moving in your places of authority, of your assigned influence. Wherever you live, listen, it's your assigned influence. God has assigned that place as your territory. We're not here to just pray for just ourselves. God is calling us as a church to arise and take back our territory, to arise over our own territory, but also to take back the territory that the enemy has occupied for too long. And I really believe that as the people of God begin to arise, we're gonna see these shootings and all of these things dissipate. And yes, there are things in the natural that need to take place as well, and I know that, but I'm telling you, it begins with prayer. We're gonna to begin to see things shift and take place and move in reaction to our prayers and not in reaction to the enemy's agendas any longer. But we need to claim what belongs to us and it does belong to us. So it's time to take back that ball of authority. And I want to encourage you, wherever you're driving, wherever you're going, your home, your um, your neighborhood, your place of work, your place of, wherever you occupy, wherever it is, even if it's this, um, you know, shopping mall, you're walking through a shopping mall, begin to plead the blood of Jesus over that shopping mall and decree in Jesus mighty name that wherever I go this place is covered by the blood of the lamb I always say to Nate every single plan we're on is the safest plane in the world because we have the blood of the lamb I pray over every single plane we go on I plead the blood of Jesus over the engines and over every single person on there that terror will not come near me Psalms 91 says terror will not come near me so in the name of Jesus, wherever I go, it is covered, it is, be, it is taken back, that territory is taken back because I am operating from a different realm. I'm operating from the realm of heaven and this has now become my territory and I'm going to see the Spirit of God move over this place. So I want to encourage you guys, do the same thing. Use your territory and take back your rightful authority over your family, over your own life, over your city, and over your state, your nation. Spread it wide. Spread the blood of the Lamb over those places and just thank the Father that anything that is operating, um, any plans of the enemy in the name of Jesus would be dissipated, they would be intercepted. We're here to intercept these plans. We're not a reactionary people. We're here on the offense. We're here to take back what belongs to us. And so I really wanted to encourage you guys with that today. We're carriers of the glory of God. Good word, Terry. Um, we, I just love you guys and I want to see you guys moving in this authority and I honestly believe that as the people of God arise and carry this light, we're not here to hide the light, we're here to carry it and spread it wide. And so as we release this, we're literally going to see the news shift in response to our prayers. So. With that being said, let me know how you guys go. If you get testimonies from this prayer, um, this little prayer gathering, please send them to me. Um, Nate and Christy at everydayrevivalist.com. Um, send them to us. I want to hear your prayer requests because I want to share them with, oh, sorry, your prayer requests, but also your prayer report, uh, your praise report. Sorry, I'm getting my words muddled up. So if you get any kind of praise report from this, whether it's little or huge, let me know. I want to hear it because testimony perpetuates testimony. Testimony literally means to do again. So whatever the Holy Spirit's doing here right now, the Holy Spirit wants to do again and again and again. So if this has encouraged you guys and you would like to see more of these prayer gatherings, let me know. Um, please let me know because um, this is kind of a little bit of a test run to see how we go with this. And I, um, yeah, I think I'm just excited to see God arising and moving through you, through you guys releasing your words of life and your words of hope and your words of prophecy and strategy, kingdom strategy over cities and nations. So I love you guys. Um, please, please send us testimonies if you get any. By the way, actually, I have one more thing I want to pray for, and that's for though uh, I felt the Holy Spirit say for women. Sorry, I just remembered. He reminded me. <laughs> um, for any women who have not been able to have babies, um, 
the enemy has kind of worked to stop babies. I just got a praise report just yesterday, I can't say who, um, but she just told, oh, sorry, this morning, I literally just heard this morning because um, a friend that I've been praying for for many years, um, she's pregnant, thank you Jesus, and there is, um, I actually also heard recently as well that we prophesied a baby boom coming um, and that there have been women who have not been able to have babies um, and they've all been falling pregnant um, despite uh, doctors saying to them that they have had to, uh, what do you call it, go through IVF and all of these different things and they've been falling pregnant naturally. Thank you, Jesus. So I want to release that same testimony over, I see a number of you writing your daughter, um, over your daughters, over um, the women. In the name of Jesus, we speak life to those wounds that have been um, restricted. We speak life to the wounds. And we thank you, Father God, that just like Hannah, that Lord, you remembered her. You remembered her cry to have a baby. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord, that from this, that we will see babies in nine months' time, in Jesus' mighty name, that you would cause a supernatural healing to wounds, in Jesus' mighty name, a supernatural healing where there have been many miscarriages. I speak an end to that in Jesus' mighty name. I speak an end to that, Father God, life to the womb, Father God, where the enemy is coming in to destroy life in the womb, that, Father God, you would cause a catapult of a baby boom in Jesus' mighty name in these daughters father that you would cause them to fall pregnant naturally father god that they would conceive without problem from this moment forth in jesus mighty name we speak life to the womb and not death in jesus name thank you father for that so please let me know you guys um any praise reports so i hope that's encouraged you guys i feel encouraged because i love praying and talking to the holy spirit and he always encourages me when i do so um, but yes, please let me know as well if you'd like to see more of these prayer gatherings. I'm really considering doing them once a week with you all and just praying. I'm um, praying over your situations and praying over the earth. So we want to see it. Anyway, I love you guys heaps. We will be doing some live videos, I'm pretty sure, from Awakening Australia um, and updating you guys from there because that's exciting what God's doing down there at the moment. Um, and we can't wait to share it with you all. So we'll be down there tomorrow and we'll be doing some live videos from there so stay in touch we love you guys and i will talk to you all soon bye